Good evening to you tuned into Smart 24 TV and thank you for watching Business Today. My name is Rona Nahabwe and with me is Fiona Navasa, the new CEO of the League of East African Directors. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. So today's topic is about institutional management and building better boards. Now, as a new CEO, yes. what should we, you know, like expect from you and what should like a startup look to since you are a reference for you know, looking for better boards, good management, better management for any institution? Um, you see, the requirement right now for, for board governance has really gone high. But for a startup, of course, you would start with the basic requirements. And, and I think one of the things that we've seen as a best practice, whether it's a family startup or it's a corporate startup, I think it's very good for your non-executive directors. These are the directors who are not um, involved in the running of the, of the organization to be more than the executive directors so that um, there is less conflict of interest. But another best practice is to make sure that your board members have uh, skills that are, that are important and that are necessary. For instance, if it is uh, an organization like uh, like uh, Vitaform, someone should there should be someone there that understands the chemistry of mattresses, someone that understands marketing. Um, as we speak right now, I think you've heard about what's happening to the Silicon Valley Bank. One of the things that has uh, come out now when people are investigating why are things going wrong is they found that uh, I think only one of the board members had any financial management experience. And yet, uh, if you remember the Jamwa case, the famous Jamwa case in Uganda, the court stated that now, um, with, with all these new developments in case law, the standard for measuring, it used to be that uh, in order to figure out whether you're a fit and proper person, then it's the standard of a reasonable man. But the case of Jamwa, the, just, the, 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 chief, the, the law justice said that the standard is now uh, whether you are skilled and knowledgeable in the area of that organization. So that's why if, you're on the, if you have someone on the audit committee, they should have some understanding of risk. Uh, risk and audit. Uh, if there is someone that is uh, on the finance committee, they should have an understanding of what budget should look like mm -hmm. because you are going to be held liable uh, for what goes wrong in your organization. Maybe for to juxtapose this and maybe set the pace and bring it to what is happening in the country. Yeah. Of course, we've seen the saga with NSSF. Yeah. And uh, aside from, you know, having experience and the skills that are required for you to be the better board chairperson, uh, what are some of those laws? Uh, have there been any laws? Because you mentioned there are many laws that, uh, that are put in place to enable this uh, management be equipped and then also be governed in a way that sets the standard. For instance, the Uganda Retirement Benefits Authority, uh, because of these retirement benefits issues, some of them that are emerging, has come up with new amendments to the law. Uh, has come up with what should a fund manager. Uh, manage if the fund manager is somehow um, is, is advising the, the savers to put their money in something they are involved in they've capped they've said you know you can only you can only save only about 30 percent of the money there this is to reduce what we call conflict of interest uh, you know that uh, in a fund for instance the administrators their managers there are all these other uh, third parties then there is the board then there is the savers, and then there is the, 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 the beneficiaries, you know, the employer and the beneficiaries. We have to make sure that the stakeholders of this whole environment, each of them has rights and responsibilities. We have to protect their rights, and we have to ensure that they carry out their responsibilities. And that requires consistent education, consistent uh, skilling, and one of the things that is happening now is you're seeing even consistent changes in regulation. UBRA, for instance, has just released eight new amendments to the laws. Now, we have another sector that is now really highly uh, regulated, the insurance sector. 
because it also deals with a lot of um, stewardship and a lot of money. And we have the banking sector, the standards are really going high there, um, especially now with the crisis that you're seeing. I think you saw the Bank of Uganda saga, but also at some point during the Greenland Bank saga, this bank crisis was all over East Africa. Now we're seeing it in uh, the Americas. So I think that it is very important to understand that corporate governance uh, requires ethical uh, governance, requires um, people that are skilled, requires people to ensure that uh, they they understand their duties and they 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 go, they they carry out their duties. So this also requires a higher level of accountability from the board because the board is the head of the organisation. So uh, I might want to think that as lead you have put up a mechanism to help Uganda particularly, because I want Absolutely. to stick to Uganda, yeah. to help some of these companies, organizations, any any organization that is in a move for business transformation yeah. in a way to have economic transformation at the end of the day, because, you know, politics, be politics, social, everything <laughs> is business. At the end yeah. of the day, money is, because if there's a crisis, at the end of the day, Money is the one that is lost. Absolutely. So, and if there is so, no money, so, there, is, there, is, there is, you know, there is no progress. Absolutely. So, my interest now with this question is to know: Have you like co collaborated with government, you know, arms, or have you collaborated with uh, specific uh, NGOs, or that are meant to equip and put your your niche and your your objective? To the yes, way it absolutely. Needs to be. You are the League of East African Directors uh, since 2015 has been training and equipping boards. It has been doing board inductions, board evaluations, and uh, as of two years ago, we started what we call the uh, Non Executive Directors Awards, the NED Awards. And these NED Awards are to, to applaud the, the NEDs or the Non Executive Directors that have been exceptional in practicing corporate governance. We think that uh, in, in upholding and uh, uploading good behavior, we will encourage it. But another thing that we've also done is that we have created a critical mass of what we call fit and proper persons. People that have been vetted, people that have been trained, people that have served on boards and been tested. So we have a critical mass. Uh, we have a huge membership all over the East African region, and we have. I are think these, since 2015, we've been recommending. As, are these people used as reference when the companies come to you? Absolutely. For, these nice. are the, this is the pool from which we recommend people when companies come and ask for boards, or when companies come and ask for trainers. Uh, you've heard of, of organizations like the CEO Summit, and yeah. oh, these are all our members. These are all our corporate members. And one of the things that we've done is we have um, partnerships with organizations like Strathmore Business School to ensure the continuous professional development of our members. It's a member-based organization. It has both individual and corporate members. And, um, oh, we have also what we call the League Convention, uh, lead convention. Now, the lead convention is like a place where we we share knowledge. Uh, we are also doing. We're going. To, we're also going to have uh, CEO roundtables, and and to discuss these issues uh, that are very like the relationship between the board and management. Recently, we've seen issues of uh, when there is a ministry involved. Uh, we saw what happened in South Africa, for instance. Uh, South African Airlines was affected by the ministry board relationship. And uh, now it's, it's actually having serious crisis. You'd wonder whether it's even there. So SABC, you know, it's a media station yeah, yeah. that suffered, I think, changed uh, CEOs like seven times in two years because Which is of these problems. The staff, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we want to see healthy organizations. And they say the head starts rotting from? The, sorry, the fish starts rotting from the head. Yeah. So we want the board to be healthy. We want the board to be resilient. We want the board to, uh, because you know we have a very brittle environment. We have a very um, unpredictable environment these days with COVID, with all these things. We need leaders that are flexible, accountable. We need leaders that are ethical, that are going to stand be in the in the face of temptation that are going to um, deal with conflict of interest fairly squarely and transparently and I, this all sounds very very you know but I will tell you that um, 
Transparency International did some uh, ethical ratings and Uganda is rating very low. It's actually rating almost the lowest in the region. And you, that, for me, sends a message that we need to do a lot. Yeah, and you mentioned something about ethics. And I remember there were, in that uh, workshop I was telling you about where they were bu uh, targeting building better boards. Yeah, they were talking about the people, lead convention. Last yes, year. yes. So they were talking about board chairpersons that serve on multiple boards as the, the board chairpersons, like you find someone is a board chair here, just because they align with their interests or maybe with their work portfolio, they are, they, they feel or they are they feel they should nominated. Be yeah. uh, so is lead, uh, lead as 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 you are. Are you trying to combat or curb these vices? Because, in a way, it it creates it there, even there, there loses, are certain loses habits, jobs. Yeah, uh, in corporate governance that are discouraged and even legislated against, like entrenchment. Entrenchment is when you want to serve more terms or you want to get your relatives within the organization. But then there are other things uh, like if you're a good person, how many boards, what's the maximum of boards yeah. you can serve on. Um, if you have, if you've had a criminal, what do you call it, a criminal record. Uh, how much time should pass before you can serve on a board? I can tell you for Uganda's boards, we have <laughs> had, or we have seen similar faces. Yes. I can tell you, I've but, seen... But this was because no one was intentionally building the capacity. And now I can assure you that for the last uh, uh, five years, LEAD has been working very hard, and I can assure you that right now we have about 150 um, board chairpersons that we're very confident about that we can, you know, ensure that they move from one place to another. But I also am confident that the more, because this year we, we have an exciting package. We are increasing, That's what I was getting to. Yes, we're increasing the number of trainings. We are increasing, uh, we're creating newer criteria to use to look at who should serve on which board. And, and of course, one of the criterion is going to be, are you on too many boards? Are you able to be effective? Are you a fit and proper person? If you're a chair on two, then maybe next time you should not be a chair, you should just be a member. And also, we need to understand that um, our economy is growing larger. We're now regionalizing. And I think you've seen uh, CEOs and board chairs moving all over the East African. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm proud to say that the League of East African Directors is now also intentionally doing that. Because if you're going to be a board in Uganda, you might as well move. You know, instead of doing three terms here, do two terms and then move maybe to another jurisdiction and stuff. And as, as we wrap up, I would like to pick your mind as a new CEO, what yeah. you should expect from LEAD in regards to building better boards, in regards to better institutional management, in regards to, you know, creating an environment that is good for business to flourish. The, the, the first thing we realize is that we have to create stronger relationships with government. Uh, with the regulators, give them the support so that they are able to train their boards, their boards that they regulate. Uh, we want to ensure that we also equip these boards, their board tools, technology. Uh, we want to educate them and bring them up to par, you know, the environmental uh, uh, governance and, 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 you know, social responsibility elements that, that, are, that are necessary. But we also want to increase the resilience of boards to to withstand pressure, to manage crisis. And we're going to do this through training, through networking events that will grow our, our networks. But we also want to create relationships with other bigger institutions that are going to grow the capacity. Again, uh, I've given you an example of Strathmore. Uh, within the region, uh, there are other universities in South Africa that you can partner with. And I can assure you that you're going to see more relationships uh, with, with league you're going to see more activities for the members, more member value. But we're also going to see uh, LEAD and other organizations advocating for legislation around governance. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. I really wish you good luck with that. Well, there you have it. If you need to build a better board or if you need reference or guidance in regards to how you can best manage your company, there is LEAD. LEAD is here. And as always, thank you for watching Business Today. My name is Rona Nahabwe. Have a good evening.